My name is Kevin Thornton and welcome to All Together Now. We are here giving you a flavour of what could have been if we didn't have COVID-19. I had been in Japan earlier on in the year and I wanted to bring a Japanese influence to All Together Now. And here we have uh, made a um, maki roll and with the rice, I cooked the rice and I used uh, lemon verbena, which is from Stephen's Green. Um, the pepper dulce was from uh, Connemara in um, Balikinili in Connemara, shallots from home, dandelions from a friend, celery from a friend, and we got some, uh, or just the trout and the prawns. So I brought Dublin Bay prawns because they're in season. And we have uh, three prawns here, so we're cooking them on salt. And I'm going to heat up the pan, salt it off 30 seconds. And the minute I hit it with uh, salt and lemon juice, it's off. And then I serve that on a plate. And in the meantime, I'm making a maki roll and sashimi of sea uh, trout and maki roll of beetroot. Okay, so here I just have a seaweed, it's a dillisk, a nori seaweed, which usually comes from the west coast of Ireland. And then I'm going to put, uh, this is, I don't like wasabi, I like fresh wasabi, but I don't like wasabi, the commercial wasabi, because it's of chemical flavor. So in Ethiopia, for instance, I, I learn an awful lot from the people in Ethiopia, and they make a sort of what I call my, their wasabi, but, and then I take ownership, but it's not really mine, because nobody owns anything. It's uh, made with tomato, garlic, and chili. And it's really, the first day you make it, poof, it blows your head off. The second day, it just cools down slightly. And then I have two sauces here, one really hot one, and then this one to cool, cool it down, because the whole idea is when you go in and you bite something, you get the flavors and you get the heat. And then after the third bite, you get the softness from it. Because if you get heat the whole way, that means it's too hot and you can't eat it, there's no point. And then all you need is a mat and it's so easy. You know, nothing in life is difficult. You can make it difficult if you want. And everything is a mind, mindset. So here I cook the rice, and usually I do one and a half, one rice to one and a half liquid. But normally when you're making uh, sushi rice, they just sort it off just with uh, flavoring. But what I do is I add a tiny bit of garlic, ginger, and uh, red shallot in there, sort it off without color, then put the rice in, wash it off, and then put lemon verbena in. So this like is really amazing, because the first time I ever tasted it was in Morocco, and it's like a tea, they call it Bella Luisa. Just easy. Just a little rice, about usually about a teaspoon or sorry, a tablespoon full of rice on it, and just till it's flat. And then a tiny bit more. The most you have to taste it because if you don't taste taste it, you're not really going to be sure what it's going to taste like. And you can't presume, you know. It's like music, food and music are the same. You know, life is no good without either. You, know, you can't live without food and you can't live without music. So I take the skin off. Now usually the thing is with uh, most uh, sashimi you freeze it. The reason you freeze it is to make sure you kill the germs, you know the bacteria, because we can't kill all bacteria but at least we can control some of it. So and then I take it out and I defrost it slowly. So I put it in here. And then a little bit of salt. This one. And this one here is a, a little lemon oil and uh, soy. And then here, uh, courgette flour. So these, uh, I've grown these at home. And just put it in here like this. Because with food, there's no secret in food. It's just like once you taste it, it should taste good. Like once you taste it and think you shouldn't be eating it, then that's bad, you know? and you just roll. And it just, so the mats you buy for maybe 50 cents or a euro in the Asian shop. And then the mackerel, so you have like here. And then what you let them rest. So what happens, you cut here like here. See, then you have little mackerels. You know, you have sometimes people to say they like uh, sushi and then they want a well done meat. And then the same with the skin. So the most important thing is that when you uh, kill anything, I always believe that you should uh, eat it. 
everything, no waste whatsoever. So if I'm doing the skin, I put it on like this. So I just and put that, and that keeps it flat, you know, for a second, because I want it crispy. So this is uh, lemon juice and aubergine gold and silver. So I use for paints to paint the plate, and that kind of represents the wall, uh, the seaweed in the sea. So this uh, passion fruit, this one here, and that's nasturtium. Uh, this nasturtium uh, flower, and then uh, lemon is. Uh, yes. You know the way you put everything safe, and then it was safe at one stage, and then it's not there when you look for it. Yeah? I always season three times when I'm seasoning stuff. I just start in the middle, and you correct seasoning at the end. So the easy, even with a prawn, you're thinking how are you supposed to uh, taste the prawn? Well, you put your fingers in and then you taste, because then you know it's seasoned. But if you don't, if you don't do it, you, you're presuming that it is what it is, you know? So you can see this now, if you see the way it's starting to go pink. See the colour is changing, see? From dark green where it doesn't look really good, to pink. And the thing is, see how simple this is. Oops. Okay. So here we're doing the trout, and you can see how beautiful the colour in this is. And this is in season from uh, the start of May until the end of August. So really perfectly for the festival, if you think about it. So you can, and the idea, the beautiful thing about these is that you could get the fish marinated in sugar, one sugar, uh, no, one salt, quarter sugar, and, sorry, one salt, half pepper and quarter sugar and then mix them all together and then fill it and make holes and then bury it the fish inside it for 24 hours and then take it out wash it down with water and then rub it with olive oil and then slice it and eat it and it lasts for three months you know? now what you can see what i'm doing is i have the, um, the skin side down right so that means i don't turn it because if i turn it i'm finished i have no control whatsoever so i leave it like this until i'm ready so in the meantime what i'm going to do is get my mackie rolls So now I'm going to turn it off and then I'm not going to turn it until I'm just ready. I turn it at the last second and then the minute I turn it, I squeeze it and off. So you don't allow it because if I turn it and then continue on, it's going to overcook on me and I have no control. I'm out. So, and this one here is a sea bass and believe it or not, the sea bass is caught. You're only allowed one sea bass and you can't buy it. It has to be a gift from somebody and uh, it's usually down your feathers from, it's about 30 kilometers from here. I did two different types of rice here as well because one you can see is quite brown and what I did is I put a vinaigrette as I'm cooking the rice, rice and that changed the color completely. So this one, because it's a sashimi, and sashimi basically just means the way it's cut and it uh, refers to raw fish, so I put it on the chili. So they would, in Japan, they would put it on the wasabi sauce, beside wasabi, so it's similar to that. And then they, these, because they're two different uh, maki rolls. See, I'm looking for my maki roll. Oh yeah, it's in front of me, sorry. So we have a, a, a red onion that I dried out. You dry it for three hours in an oven and you just set the oven to a cool temperature about 50 degrees. And then this one here is uh, corn flour. So corn flour grows wild, you know, between May and August. And then this the skin and then the skin of the fish. So I just saw it off as you saw. Then basil, uh, three different types of mackie roll. So beetroot, uh, sea bass, oh no, not sea bass, uh, trout. And then the sashimi of trout with the, the chili sauce. And then the broth, once the broth boils, because always you use every part of the fish. So rather than throw away, you saw that I used the skin. So the carcass, I use a broth. And easy to make a broth, you just saute off a little onion, lemongrass, lemon verbena, this, because it's really beautiful flavor. 
and you put your carcass in and then you salt it or fry it with no color uh, for about 10 minutes. One glass of white wine and then you reduce by half and then just barely cover it with water, bring it to the boil and simmer for 20 minutes and turn it off and let it rest for 10 minutes and then strain it because the impurities go to the bottom rather than the top. So when you're straining, you don't throw everything out because if you throw everything, all the impurities come back up again. So here I just put uh, some ginger and so these are uh, dandelion uh, petals. You know, dandelion, you can make coffee with dandelion. Have you ever drink coffee? Just a tiny drop. And then a ginger. The thing is that you put stuff around and it's in, it's gone. You're doing great. So with the flavors, you know, you kind of get the flavor and then you work, work, work it, work it up. Because if I, you could put in lots of stuff and then forget about it and you presume it's okay. But if it's like layering. It's almost like music, you know, with music you're layering and layering and layering and layering. That's the very same thing with food. You know? But with food, you have it once, it's gone forever. Music is there, but your energy is the same thing because you give, when you're performing, you get different performance each time. And just put it last one like this. And the whole thing, like with everything, is a little bit. You know, because you know the way sometimes with food, you feel, or you're out with somebody and you, they order and you order and you think, oh shit, I should order that. So the thing is, because we're never happy with what we get, we always want what somebody else has. So but the thing also with these sort of things is that it's small, but you can eat lots and lots of them. And then you can get full, but then you leave it and then come back later. When you smell it first, actually, is you 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 get um, a, flavor, a smell of lemon and fish, but not very strong for smell of fish. And then when you taste it, you get sliced ginger, and then almost like you get a cut into the water, and then the flavors. It's bizarre, actually. I think this, you could do this easy enough. So there's no big secrets in it. And the most important thing is that we see you all here next year and we can do this. We can have a masterclass, sushi masterclass. So hope to see you all in 2021.